Good morning to those of you who are joining. Good morning, everybody. We'll be starting in just a few minutes. We'll wait for people to join. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining. We'll be starting very soon. Hello to everyone who's joining. We'll be starting in just a little bit, so sit tight. Thank you for joining today. All right, we can go ahead and get started. Hello, everybody. My name is Monica and I work for California State Parks. Thank you for joining today for this episode of our Coast to Couch series. On your screen, you should be seeing a, a flyer for our Coast to Couch series. It uh, is hosted by the California State Parks on the Central Coast, which includes Morro Bay State Park and Hearst San Simeon State Park. And these are to help bring our parks to your homes. We know it's really hard to get out uh, in your parks right now. So we're hosting these webinars on Thursdays and Saturdays at 10 a.m. They're free and you're welcome to register for however many you'd like. You can uh, check our social media pages, which I will post at the end of this program to find out uh, how to register for all those programs. I would like to say thank you so much for doing your part to help flatten the curve of COVID-19. Again, we know it's really hard to get out in your parks right now. So thank you for staying home and just exploring your local outdoor areas uh, and not visiting uh, parks that are far away from you. Uh, we hope that bringing these videos and these webinars and programs to you uh, will be good enough for now. And just know that California State Parks will be here for you once everything is reopened. So again, my name is Monica. Thanks so much for joining. Uh, today I'm here at Hearst San Simeon State Park, and I'm going to show you some really awesome things here today. Uh, but first of all, I just want to get you oriented with a couple things you might be seeing on your screen. So uh, today, today's episode is mostly oriented towards third, fourth, and fifth graders. So I want to say hi to all my third, fourth, and fifth graders who are watching, as well as their teachers. Uh, thanks for joining today. Uh, now, I am not able to see you here today. I'm going to turn this part off real quick. Uh, I'm not able to see you here today, and you won't be able to uh, speak. I won't be able to hear you, but there are a couple buttons that you can use that are on your screen uh, that can help me kind of understand uh, uh, who's in my audience, who uh, is here, who has questions. So at the bottom of your screen, you should see a button that says raise hand. And uh, that button is gonna, you can use that button if I ask you a question. I say, okay, raise your hand if you know what this is. And then you can raise your hand uh, and I'll be able to see your name. So why don't we go ahead and try that. If you see the raise hand button at the bottom of your screen, go ahead and click it so I can see who has their hand raised. A lot of you have found it, that's great. Awesome. 
All right. And then if I ask you to lower your hands, all you have to do is just click that button again and it'll lower your hands. So let's go ahead and lower our hands. Awesome. Great job, everybody. Okay. And there's another button here today that you uh, are able to use and it's the Q and A box. And that's also at the bottom of your screen. It uh, has the letters Q and A in it. And uh, I want you to use this if you have any questions or answers to any questions that I ask. Now, there are a lot of you here today. So I please ask that you just use it to ask questions and answer questions because it might be hard to keep track if there's a lot of things happening in there. Uh, but please, if you have any questions, ask them. And uh, even though there's a lot of you, I'm gonna try to get to all of your questions. And even if we don't get to them today, I'll share with you at the end of the program how you can still ask me your questions even when this is over. So, all righty. Looks like we've got it uh, figured out here. Now, I kind of want to get an idea of who, uh, who's watching today. So if you are in third grade, could you raise your hand? Wow. Hi to all my third graders. Wow, so many of you. Looks like we have uh, Miss Boyer's class in here. I see her name. Uh, coming up there. Awesome. Hello, Miss Boyer's class. Okay, third graders and everyone else, you can go ahead and lower your hand. Thank you. Uh, what about any fourth graders? Do I have fourth graders who are watching? I see a good amount of fourth graders here too. Great. Okay, fourth graders, you can go ahead and lower your hand. Now, do I have any fifth graders? Any fifth graders, go ahead and raise your hand. I see some fifth graders, that's great. All righty, thank you. And do I have anybody who's not in third, fourth, or fifth grade? You can raise your hand if you're not in third, fourth, or fifth grade. Awesome. Okay, well, I'm glad I kind of had a better, have a better idea of who's joining me today. I'm really excited to show you some things that we have here. Uh, so again, my name is Monica and I work for California State Parks at a park called Hearst San Simeon State Park. So I'm gonna show you where that is on a map because maybe you've never heard of Hearst San Simeon State Park before. So in a second on your screen, you should be seeing a map of California. And uh, we are located right about here. So we're located on the West Coast. So we're right along the Pacific Ocean. And so we have really beautiful beaches we have some really uh, amazing hiking trails and nice mountains. Uh, it's really beautiful here. And uh, we're right in between the big cities of San Francisco and Los Angeles. So right here is where you will be visiting today. Uh, this is where I am right now. And in a second, I'm gonna flip the camera around and show you the beautiful views and the uh, amazing things we have here on the beach. So what you're seeing is live. Uh, you get to see exactly what I see from your very own house, which is pretty amazing. Okay, uh, so one of my favorite things about Hearst San Simeon State Park is the animals that we see here. There's so many different types of animals. Raise your hand if you like animals too. Wonderful, I see lots of hands raised. Who doesn't like animals, right? Great, okay, you can lower your hands, thank you. Well, one of my favorite animals that we see here at Hearst San Simeon State Park is something called an elephant seal. Oh, an elephant seal? Raise your hand if you've heard of an elephant seal before, or if, even if you've seen an elephant seal before. Oh my gosh, so many of you have heard or seen of an elephant seal. That's amazing. Wow, okay. Go ahead and lower your hands, thank you. Well, today, you are gonna get to see some elephant seals in real life. Now, if you've never seen one before, today's your lucky day because you're gonna get to see some cool things uh, about these animals. You're gonna learn some cool things that they do. If you have seen an elephant seal before, maybe you'll learn something new today, something you didn't know before. So, really excited to show you. Uh, and just so you know, today's program will last uh, about an hour, so we'll probably go until 11. Uh, but if you wanna stay longer and ask questions, that's totally fine. Um, Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Okay, let me just check the question box real quick. I will make sure these are good. Okay, all right. So are you ready to see the elephant seals? Raise your hand if you're ready to see them. I am too, okay. 
Go ahead and lower your hands. Thank you. Now, before we see them, I want you to imagine in your head what you think these elephant seals might look like. So if you've seen one before, think about it. Let's recreate that animal in your head. Hmm, what do I remember an elephant seal looks like? What do I think it's doing? Think about that. If you've never seen one before, think about its name, elephant seal, and what that might mean. What would an animal called an elephant seal look like? So let's think about it. And I actually want to invite you all to close your eyes while we do this. So everyone close your eyes with me and we're going to take a de uh, deep breath in through our nose and out through our mouth. All right, deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. Okay, now keep your eyes closed and keep imagining, keep imagining that elephant seal and I'll let you know when you can open your eyes. Keep those eyes closed, keep imagining. Okay, go ahead and open up your eyes. These are elephant seals. Check it out. And they are all over the beach here. So we have some right up close here, uh, right below, and then we have some way back in the beach on the distance. So all those lumps that you see, those are all elephant seals. And this is the animal that we will be talking about today. Now the elephant seal is very, very special. The elephant seal is something called a marine mammal. Raise your hand if you know what a marine mammal is. Raise your hand if you know what a marine mammal is. Awesome, I see a good amount of you have raised your hands. Great, okay, go ahead and lower your hands. Well, I bet you were thinking a marine mammal is something uh, that lives in the ocean, an animal that lives in the ocean. And that's exactly right. But you're probably looking at these elephant seals and saying, wait a second, if they're marine mammals, how come they're on land. Good question. Well, that's the tricky part. Elephant seals spend time in both the water and on land. Huh. And we're going to talk about why they do that today. So uh, most of the time, these elephant seals will be in the water. So about eight to 10 months out of the year, they're in the water and they're diving, they're looking for food. They spend most of their time out in the ocean. But a couple times a year, they will come to the beach and they'll come to the beach for a few weeks at a time. So I kind of like to think of it as the beach is the elephant seals vacation. So their permanent home where they spend most of their time is in the ocean. That's where they are most of the time. But when it's time for them to rest, and relax and take their vacation, they will come to the beach. And that's what they're doing now. They're on their beach vacation. And we're gonna talk about why they come here for their beach vacation, because they do some things here on land that uh, they can't do in the water. So we're gonna talk about what they do in the water. We're gonna talk about uh, what they do on land. And we're gonna talk about some of its adaptations. We're gonna talk about uh, its life cycle. And we're gonna talk about how humans can have an effect on them. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, get started. Let's see, what is an adaptation? If you know what an adaptation is, uh, go ahead and type it in the Q&A box. And I see some of you have already asked some questions. I see some really great questions in here. Uh, don't worry, I will answer them, but um, we, we will get to it. Thank you for asking. So what, what is an adaptation? Go ahead and type it uh, in the Q&A box if you know what an adaptation is. Someone from Ms. Boyer's class says it's something that they do. Good answer. Rafi says an adaptation is where they live. Not quite, that would be their habitat, but their adaptations might have to do with where they live. Does anyone else know what an adaptation is? 
Oh, I see a good answer uh, from Jaden. He says an adaptation is when they adapt to the surroundings around them. Oh, I see another good answer. It's a special set of skills that an animal has that helps them survive in their habitat. Great job. Yeah, I really like these answers. Good job, everybody. So an adaptation is something uh, that helps an animal survive, just like you said. So it could be a, uh, a physical adaptation, so parts of their bodies that help them survive, or it could be a behavioral adaptation, something that they do that helps them survive. Exactly. So we're going to talk about some of those things today. Uh, but first, I just want to tell you just how big these animals are. Uh, and get you a better sense of how big they are because it might be kind of hard to tell on screen. So I want everyone to think about how tall you are in feet. Think about how tall you are in feet and keep it in your head, okay? So for me, I'm about five feet and two inches tall. So I have that in my mind, okay? Are you ready? An elephant seal, a male elephant seal, can reach lengths up to 16 feet long. 16 feet long, can you imagine that? That's huge, that's at least three of me. It's amazing. And they're so big, they can weigh up to 5,000 pounds. 5,000 pounds, wow, that's about the weight of a small truck. Wow, so these creatures are massive. And a female elephant seal, uh, they're not as big, but still way bigger than us. She's about 10 to 12 feet long. 10 to 12 feet long for a female. So that's at least two of me. And she weighs just under 2,000 pounds. Just under 2,000 pounds. So these animals are huge. So you have a little bit better sense of just how big they are. The animals that you see on screen here on the beach uh, a lot of them haven't even reached those lengths yet. So they are still a little bit uh, smaller than those lengths that we just talked about. So we can keep that in mind, uh, how big these animals are while we talk about them today. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with our adaptations. So I'm gonna pull up a photo here. It's a close-up picture of a male elephant seal. All right, this is a close-up of a male elephant seal. Whoa! I bet the first thing that you noticed about this elephant seal was its giant nose. And I bet you can imagine how it got its name, elephant seal, because it's got a giant nose that kind of reminds people of an elephant's trunk. So only the males have this nose. Uh, that makes them easy to identify once they're older. Uh, but that nose is actually one of their adaptations. Hmm. So uh, this nose helps them uh, with, with one special thing. So for male elephant seals, all that they care about, their biggest goal is to prove to the other seals how big and strong they are. That's all they care about. They just wanna be the biggest and the strongest and the toughest on the beach. And believe it or not, their nose actually helps them do that. Hmm, so uh, how do they do that? So maybe if you were with your friends, you would flex your muscles to show each other how strong you were. You'd flex your muscles, be like, look at me, so strong. Well, these elephant seals would flex their noses. And when they flex their, their noses, they, it puffs up real big and it'd be about two feet long. Wow, huge nose. So uh, that's one uh, adaptation that a male elephant seal has. It's nose that helps it uh, prove how big and strong it is. Because the bigger the nose, usually the bigger and stronger you are. Okay, now I'm gonna pull up another photo here and this is gonna be uh, two male elephant seals and they're also doing some things to prove how big and strong they are. And I want you to put on your scientist hats and make some observations about what's going on in this picture. So what do you notice? Could be something that they're doing. It could be what they look like. Go ahead and type your observations in the Q&A box.
what do you notice about these two male elephant seals? Someone said he looks like Squidward. That's pretty funny. And don't worry, I know when, uh, I know I haven't asked a lot or answered a lot of your questions yet, but I will get to them, so thank you. So what do you notice here? I see some people are saying they're fighting. Yeah, they're fighting to see who's stronger. Definitely, it definitely looks like they're fighting. Okay, perfect, they are fighting. Any other observations that you notice? Could be something about their bodies. Do you notice any different colors or textures? What else do you notice about these elephant seals? Ooh, someone from Miss Boyer's class says that they have scars or they have blood. Ooh, yeah, let's see. Ooh, someone says it looks like they've been fighting for something because the scratches and the blood on the chest indicates that. Good observation. Yeah, guys, they're, they do have some scars and yep, they're a little, there's probably a little bit of blood, whoa. So it sounds pretty intense, right? Well, when these male elephant seals fight with each other, it's called sparring, sparring. Only the males fight. And when they do this, they get in like positions like this and then they kind of just hit their heads into one another, which sounds kind of aggressive, but that's what they do. And sometimes they can get scratched by the sharp teeth. Uh, but these male elephant seals, because they fight so much, they probably need some kind of protection, right? Imagine fighting all the time and not have any kind of protection. Well, those scars that you noticed, that is their protection. Hmm. So those, those scars, that pinkish area that you see there that looks kind of rough, that's something called a chest shield. A chest shield. And when you think about what a shield does, it protects, right? It protects what's behind it. This elephant seal chest shield is a hard protective layer on their bodies that helps uh, protect them during these fights. And if you wanna know just how hard this layer is, go ahead and take your finger and tap on your fingernail. Tap on your fingernail. Your fingernail is made out of something called keratin. And that's the same stuff that the elephant seal's chest shield is made out of. So it's that hard protective layer. So uh, this chest shield will get larger and spread to more parts of its bodies the more fights that it gets into and the older that it gets. So I can actually tell that these elephant seals here are probably pretty old because when they're younger, their chest shield is really only right about here. But as they get older and the more fights that they, that they get into, it kind of spreads around their neck like a necklace and it becomes in line with their eyes. So these ones are pretty old. They've been in a lot of fights. And um, you're probably wondering, hold on, why do elephant seals fight in the first place? Who cares if they're bigger and stronger than the other seals, right? Hmm. Why do you think? Why do you think these elephant seals fight with each other? Only the males fight. Hmm. Why do they care about being the biggest and the strongest? I see some answers. Andrew says they're fighting for who is greater to be the leader. Hmm. What else do we have? Let's see. They're fighting for a mate. Huh, those sound like good answers. They want the females. Yep, they're fighting for a mate. Yep, sounds like we're all kind of on the same page. Yep, so these uh, male elephant seals, they will fight each other because the winner of the fight will get to mate with a bunch of females. In fact, he'll get to mate with 30 to 50 girlfriends. So he will mate with a lot of females if he wins the fight and he will also kind of be the leader of that area of the beach that he's on. So the other seals who aren't as big and strong as him won't mess with him and they won't mess with the females that he's uh, surrounded by. So that's why these males fight here. 
Awesome. Okay, I'm going to turn that photo off. So we've talked about some adaptations that the males have. What about some adaptations that both males and females have? Hmm. Well, I noticed one of you asked, how come they're so fat? Well, they have something called blubber, which is an adaptation that they have. And I bet lots of you have heard of blubber before. Raise your hand if you know, if you've heard of blubber, or if you know, and if you know any other animals that have blubber. Yeah, lots of you have heard of blubber, or you know an animal that has blubber. Great, you can go ahead and lower your hands. Thank you. Yeah, blubber is fat. And blubber uh, is found on most marine mammals. So most marine mammals have that blubber to help keep them warm while they're in the ocean. Because remember, the ocean's a lot colder than it is on land. So they need that to help insulate them, protect them from losing heat. So it's especially important for these elephant seals because they are extremely deep divers. They dive very, very deep in the ocean, and the deeper that you go in the ocean, the colder that it gets. So they especially need lots and lots of blubber to help keep them warm while they're down there. Now, their blubber also serves a different purpose for them while they're on land. Hmm. So let's think about that. We know that their blubber helps keep them warm while they're in the ocean, but when they're on land, it does something else for them. So I'm gonna give you a couple of hints and let you think about it. Uh, don't start typing yet. Let's see what we can brainstorm. So I'm gonna give you a hint. So when these elephant seals are in the water, they're looking for food, right? They're eating lots and lots of food and they're building up their blubber because a lot of the food that they eat it's stored in their body as fat. So the more food that they eat, the more blubber they, they collect. And then once it's time for them to come to their beach vacation, they have lots and lots of blubber built up, right? And when they get to the beach, they don't eat at all. They don't eat or drink at all. Hmm, but they have a lot of blubber built up Huh, I wonder what that blubber might do for them. So if you think you know what that blubber might be used for for them while they're on land, go ahead and type it in the Q&A box. Type what you think. Hmm. Okay, I see some answers here. Hmm, I see it's uh, their blubber. It's used to survive. It stores food. Their blubber kind of feeds them, and they they use the blubber as food. Interesting. It gives them energy. It provides them nutrition. Oh, similar to what bears do before hibernation. They build up blubber and store it until they could use it. I love that analogy, thank you. And that's exactly right, everybody. Elephant seals will build up their blubber in order to have enough energy stored up for those few weeks that they're here on the beach without eating any food. So whatever they come to the beach with, uh, whatever blubber they have built up is what they have to survive off of while they're here. So I want to show you what an elephant seal might look like when he arrives to the beach uh, and he's built up a lot of blubber. So let me show you this photo. This is what an elephant seal might look like when he arrives to the beach. He's got lots of blubber built up, right? Okay, now remember that. That elephant seal, that male elephant seal, will stay on the beach without eating and he'll use his blubber as energy. And when he's ready to go back out into the ocean again after his beach vacation, this might be what he looks like. Check out that difference. Let me show you that first picture again. So this is 
arriving to the beach with lots of blubber. And this is leaving the beach after he's used a lot of his blubber. Wow, you see how much weight he's lost? He's lost probably about almost half of his body weight because he's using all his blubber. So that brings up a really uh, important thing to think about uh, for remembering that wildlife is using a limited amount of energy. So let's compare that to something that we do. So go ahead and raise your hand if you, uh, if at home you save money, say you put money in a piggy bank or your wallet somewhere and you wanna save up money. Good, I see a lot of your hands. Okay, so a lot of you save money. Go ahead and lower your hands, thank you. So uh, say you're saving up money for something big, something that you really wanna buy. Or let's say that you're saving up money uh, because you're about to go on a trip and you wanna have some spending money. So let's think about that. Say you saved up money, say you saved up $100 to have spending money on your vacation. And now you're on your vacation and you're wanting to buy some things. Are you gonna be uh, spending money on whatever you want, just not even thinking about the price, doing whatever? Probably not, right? You're probably gonna be really conscious and really careful about how you spend your money because you only have a limited amount. So everything that you buy has to be something that you really, really want or something that you really, really need, right? Well, that's the same thing with these elephant seals and their blubber. They've spent so much time building up their blubber because they know that they're gonna have to use that while they're here on the beach. So every movement that they make has to be something uh, that they need to do, right? Because moving uses energy. So, so a lot of you notice, whoa, these seals kind of look like they're dead, right? They're not really doing much. Well, they're not being lazy. They're laying there because they're saving energy. Every time that they move, we'll be using some of that limited amount of energy that it, ha that it has, right? So everything that they do has to be something that they need to. So that brings up a really important part uh, for us to remember when we're viewing wildlife. So uh, I'm going to show you real quick just kind of where I am in relationship to these seals. Some of you asked, why aren't you right down there with them on the beach? I'm actually on this nice little pathway with a fence that's overlooking the beach here. And we're not right down on the beach with the elephant seals. Hmm. Now, do you think that maybe if I was down on the beach with the elephant seals, that that might disturb them or bother them? Raise your hand if you think that might bother them or disturb them or stress them out. Yeah, and you'd be right. All of you who are raising your hands, thank you. Go ahead and lower your hands. Yeah, so if I was down there, uh, I might be stressing them out or bothering them, and they'd probably want to wiggle their bodies away from me to get away, right? But what would that mean? That mean that they're using energy, right? So it, that would be me causing them to use energy that they might not really want to use. So that's just something to keep in mind when you're viewing wildlife, any types of animals, whether it's something as big as an elephant seal or as small as a rabbit, they're all relying on a limited amount of energy. Uh, so we don't want to do anything that would make them uh, use energy that they might not need to whether it's an animal uh, at a park or even in your neighborhood. So that's just something to keep in mind. Okay, now I noticed some of you asked, what do they eat? Right, because we said they are building up their blubber in the ocean by eating things. What do they eat? Well, they eat lots and lots of fish. And they eat lots of other things too. Raise your hand if you have some other ideas as to what they might eat. Raise your hand if you think you know what else they eat besides fish. Okay, I see some people have their hands raised. Maybe some of you were thinking, ooh, I think that they eat squid or octopus. Hmm, that sounds good. That sounds like an, uh, something an elephant seal would eat. If they eat fish, that must mean that they're carnivores and they eat lots of meat. So they probably eat squid, octopus. Maybe they eat small sharks, whoa, or rays. Yeah, elephant seals see, uh, eat all sorts of things. 
Uh, I see some of you said shrimp or seaweed. Shrimp, maybe that might be a little small. Seaweed, probably not. They don't. I don't uh, think they eat too many plants. It's mostly going to be those fish and squid and octopus and small sharks. All right, what about who their predators are? Who do you think might hunt an elephant seal? I, before you type it, let me guess what you're thinking. Raise your hand if you were thinking a great white shark. Raise your hand if you were thinking great white shark. Okay, awesome, keep your hands raised. Raise your hand if you were thinking a killer whale or an orca. Awesome, yep. Those are two main predators, the great white shark and the killer whale. Yeah, so uh, those are the two main things that might hunt an elephant seal. But uh, I'll tell you what, these elephant seals can swim a lot farther out from the coast and they dive way deeper than those sharks and killer whales go. So they usually are able to avoid them uh, pretty easily. Now they also have another type of predator that might not be what you think. So we were thinking big animals, right? Big animals like the great white shark and the killer whale. Well, they have another predator that's really, really small. It's a type of small shark and it's something called a cookie cutter shark. And this cookie cutter shark is only about one to two feet long, but it's got some really, really sharp teeth. And what they do, they will take a little bite out of an elephant seal's belly. They usually attack from below. They'll take a bite out of an elephant seal's belly and they'll just take a chunk out, which sounds pretty crazy. Like, ah, doesn't that hurt the elephant seal? It probably does hurt them. But remember, they have so much blubber that it doesn't really get to anything important. They just, it'd just be like us getting a scratch on our skin. It probably hurts, but it's not too bad because, uh, it isn't getting anything underneath. But sometimes, uh, actually a lot of times, we see elephant seals on the beach with scars from cookie cutter sharks. Ooh, we see a lot of elephant seals with scars. So if you see all these little circular marks here, those are all scars from cookie cutter sharks. Those are all bite scars, and we can see, we usually see a lot of them on the beach with those scars. Now, I would show you some, but it looks like most of these seals are laying on their bellies, so we can't really see. Uh, but we see a lot of them like that. Okay, so we talked about what they do while they're in the ocean. They're looking for food, they're diving deep, they're avoiding predators. Now, what about on land? What do they do on land? And let me answer that question that a lot of you have been asking. Why are they throwing sand on themselves? It's a great observation. A lot of you might have noticed that. Well, they, and I noticed that some of you answered it too. They're throwing sand on themselves to help keep them cool. Because remember, they have so, so much blubber, right? And that probably makes them pretty hot. That'd be like us wearing a thick jacket when it's warm outside. So they have that really thick layer of blubber that keeps them very warm. So they throw sand on their back uh, because that sand is a lot cooler and it would help lower their body temperature. Uh, it's kind of like their version of sunscreen. Keeps them cool and it blocks the sun. So uh, thank you for making those observations. Okay, so what about some things that they do while they're on land? Because remember, they come to, their, uh, to land for their beach vacation to do some things that they can't do in the water. So one of those things that they come to the beach for is something that they're actually, uh, that's actually happening to these seals right now. So right now is the time of year where elephant seals molt. Raise your hand if you've heard of the word molting before. Lots of you have heard of the word molting. Yeah, great job, you can lower your hands. If you haven't heard of the word molting, molting just means to shed. Yes, these elephant seals shed. They're covered in very uh, short hairs, uh, short haired fur all over their bodies and they shed this every year. Now, if you think of, uh, maybe you have a cat or dog at home and they probably shed too, right? But they shed a few hairs at a time. You, usually, you might see some hairs on your bed or on your couch somewhere. It's not like all their hair falls off at once, right? Well, 
That's what happens to the elephant seal. All their hair falls off at once in a short period of time. They molt all a whole layer of their fur and skin in a short period of time. So if you see in this picture, that brownish fur that's peeling off, that's that old layer of fur. And it just falls off and underneath they have a, a new gray layer of fur. Now, uh, when they do this, when they molt, it doesn't hurt them. It's just part of life. They do it every single year. And that fur just falls off, just falls off. Uh, and this is what it might look like when it's molting. And bonus points if you noticed the cookie cutter shark bite scars on this animal. Okay, so when that molt falls off, uh, it's left on the beach. And sometimes when there's no elephant seals on the beach, you might be able to find pieces of their molt, pieces of their fur on the beach. This is close up what their fur looks like. So uh, their fur, is like I said, very short hairs, right? And it's not very soft. It's not soft like your cat or your dog. It's actually really rough. Kind of feels like Velcro. Kind of feels like Velcro, but that's that uh, brownish color fur that would be falling off. So that's uh, what happens to them every single year. And it's so dramatic since it all falls off at once, it's called a catastrophic molt a catastrophic molt. All right, so that's one reason why an elephant seal will come to the beach. That's actually what's happening right now. Another reason they will come to the beach during the winter time is for the pregnant moms to give birth to their pups. So the pregnant moms will come to the beach during the winter and they will give birth to one pup, one baby elephant seal that might look like this. I think they're very cute. But this baby elephant seal, this pup, is born with a shiny black fur coat. So it makes it really easy to spot them on the beach after they're born. And this is what they look like. You're probably thinking, wait a second. It doesn't look like this pup has much blubber. Doesn't it need blubber to survive on the beach? Good question. Well, they get their blubber from their mom's milk. That's how they build up their fat. They build up their fat uh, by drinking their mom's milk. And their mom's milk has so much fat in it that they actually triple their weight in just four weeks. They triple their weight in four weeks. So they get really, really big after feeding off their mom's milk. And this might be uh, what a pup looks like once it's gained a whole lot of weight. So here we have the mom and her pup, and check it out. Look at that pup, it got really chunky. That's all from the mom's milk. So that mom will protect her pup and nurse her pup for about four weeks. And then the mom will go back out to the ocean and the pup will stay on the beach, which sounds sad, but it isn't because the pup is able to survive uh, by itself and it gets to hang out with all the other pups and then eventually the pups will go out to the ocean. All right, so those are elephant seal pups. Those are the two main reasons they come to the beach for molting and to give birth, uh, and they always come to rest. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you a little story about these elephant seals, but first, raise your hand if you wanna get a closer look at these elephant seals. Who wants to see them a little bit closer? Yay, I do too. Okay, go ahead and lower your hands. I'm gonna put on my special magnifying uh, camera onto this, so it might look funny for a second. Give it just a second here. All right, there we go. So here are elephant seals up close, and I'll tell you a little story about them while we look. This one is molting, you can see. See how the blondish fur is falling off and it's got its head is revealed the, the gray fur. That one looks like it might have some scars actually. Okay, so I'll tell you a little story about these elephant seals. Did you know that in the 1800s, so a couple hundred years ago, they were almost extinct? That's right, they were almost extinct, which means there were hardly any left. 
In fact, there were less than 100 left in the whole world. They were all found on one island. And the reason they were uh, almost extinct was actually because people used to hunt them. Yeah, believe it or not, people used to hunt elephant seals and they'd use their blubber to melt it down into oil and they'd use that oil for lots of different things. But they hunted them so often that uh, they almost became extinct. And when people started realizing, oh my gosh, these elephant seals are going extinct, there's not too many of them, people started putting laws into place to help protect them. So it became illegal to hunt an elephant seal or to harm an elephant seal. And eventually, their population grew and grew and grew and grew. So they went from less than 100 back then to now there's over 170,000 elephant seals in the whole world. Pretty amazing. They've made an amazing comeback. Now, let's think about that for a second. Remember, so there used to be just uh, over a or under 100 left on one island. But eventually, as their population grew, they couldn't all stay on that island together anymore. There wasn't enough room. So they had to find different beaches to go to for when they wanted to take their beach vacation. So I want you to think about if you were an elephant seal and you were looking for a new beach to take your beach vacation, what kinds of things would you be looking for on the beach? What would you want to see on the beach? What would you not want to see on the beach? Go ahead and type in the Q&A box what you think a, a healthy and safe place for an elephant seal is. What would an elephant seal want or not want on the beach? Ooh, okay, let's see. I'm seeing some answers. I'll give you some more time. Uh, I see a lot of you are saying you wouldn't like to see people on the beach. Exactly. Remember, people might disturb or bother or harm an elephant seal, right? So elephant seals would not want to come to a beach where there's a lot of human activity. So just like you don't see any humans on this beach right now, that makes it perfect for an elephant seal. Oh, I also like how some of you have said that you don't want to see pollution or trash on the beach. I love that answer. Raise your hand if you think, that's, if you think that would uh, not be good for an elephant seal, to see trash and pollution on the beach. I see lots of hands raised, great. And that's exactly right. Elephant seals would not want to see pollution or trash on their beach. And not just elephant seals, but any other animal that spends uh, time on the beach or in the ocean or anywhere else, anywhere else in the, in the wild where there is pollution. Because the wild are, is in uh, the animal's home, right? And I'm sure you wouldn't want to see a bunch of trash or pollution in your homes. So that, uh, that makes it really, really important for us to be really conscious about where our trash ends up. So our trash should only be going in recycle bins or in trash cans, right? Because if it doesn't end up there, it could end up somewhere else. It could eventually get led to the ocean or to the beach or somewhere in the wild where it might affect wildlife. And trash can be really harmful for animals. They might accidentally eat it. They could get trapped in it. They could get hurt by it. So uh, we should be really careful about where uh, we put our trash. And we can even be really careful about how much trash we, we produce. So I want that to be your challenge today. Think about ways that you can use those three R's that we all know, reduce, reuse, and recycle. Because that will limit uh, the possibility of something ending up out here on the beach or anywhere else 
that might hurt an animal. So I bet a lot of you are already doing some things right now to help reduce, reuse, and recycle. And you don't need to type it in right now. I want it to be a challenge just for you to think about it. But I want to ask, because I think some of you probably do it already, go ahead and raise your hand if you use a reusable water bottle. If you use a reusable water bottle. Wow, lots of you. That's wonderful. Thank you. Okay, go ahead and lower your hands. If you use a reusable water bottle, that's great because you're using the same thing over and over again, right? You're reusing it instead of just using something once, like a plastic water bottle, and throwing it away. That's great. Okay, what about um, if you, uh, when you and your family go to the grocery store safely, uh, do you bring your own bags? Raise your hand if any of you bring your own bags when you go to the grocery store. Great. Lots of you do, that's wonderful. Great, okay, lower your, you can go ahead and lower your hands. Thank you for sharing with me, those are great. And see, that's, that's wonderful because uh, you're, again, you're reusing something, giving it more than one use instead of just using something once and throwing it away. Those are both really awesome things. So if you, if you raise your hand for any of those, go ahead and uh, give yourself a pat on the back. If you know other ways that you are reducing or recycling or reusing, give yourself an, a pat on the back. So I want that to be your challenge today to think of ways that you can reduce, reuse, and recycle at home, whether it's every day or every week or as often as you can. So I want that to be uh, your thought today. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and flip this back around because we're almost done. We do have some time left. I'm gonna go through some of your questions uh, and then uh, we'll I'll share with you at the end if you uh, didn't get your question answered, how you can get it. So let's see. Uh, we have someone who asked, do they have fingers on their flippers? Uh, their flippers kind of, it's kind of like if our fingers were stuck together like this. So it's, uh, it's like this to help them swim, helps them uh, go through the water easily, but they do have really long fingernails and you might have seen some scratching their heads with them. Good question. Uh, what's the difference from a regular seal? Well, this is just another type of seal. Uh, an elephant seal, there are two species of elephant seals. The ones we have here are northern elephant seals. Uh, northern elephant seals are in the northern hemisphere. And there are also southern elephant seals who are a little bit bigger and they're in the southern hemisphere. Uh, and these are uh, the biggest types of seals, uh, southern elephant seals and northern elephant seals. You might be, if you're saying a regular seal, maybe you might be thinking of a harbor seal which is a lot smaller and they're usually gray with spots on them. Uh, they mostly hang out near the coast. They don't dive as far as, uh, as these elephant seals do. Um, let's see, any, let's see, what other questions that we have in here? And I love your questions, guys, thank you. Uh, we answered that, why they throw sand uh, on their backs to help keep them cool, right? Uh, let's see. When they're on land, are they cold? Usually not. In fact, let me flip this around. So earlier this morning, there were a lot of seals who were uh, closer to me on this side. But as the sun has come out more, a lot of them have moved a little closer to the ocean there where they can feel the, the coolness of the water. Good question. All right, so let's see what other ones we have in here. Okay, um, someone asked if this is being recorded and how you'll be able to find it afterwards. Yes, it is being recorded. Um, so you can find this later on YouTube. Uh, we have a YouTube channel here in our area of California State Parks. It's called the Slow Coast District YouTube page. And you can subscribe to it. We're posting videos about all sorts of things. Uh, I can write that on there. Let me see if I can. Maybe I can't. I'll, uh, Slow Coast District, S-L-O, Coast District on YouTube. We'll be posting lots of videos, uh, not just about elephant seals, but lots, lots of uh, other types of animals and cool history about the area as well. Um, let's see. Do 
Do they go to the beach in winter on purpose? Because maybe they know nobody wants to go to the beach. <laughs> That's some great insight there. Uh, well, for elephant seals, they go to the beach during winter. It's just part of their natural calendar. They have like an internal calendar. They have a schedule, right? And they know I'm supposed to be on the beach in the winter. It's not really related to whether there's people or not, because remember, this is a protected area where people can't go on the beach anyway. But that's a really good question and a really good observation. It does make sense. Uh, let's see. Oh, someone said, don't, a lot of baby seals die, right? Yes, a lot, sometimes a lot of pups, uh, they don't make it a lot because sometimes they get separated from their moms. Uh, and their moms aren't able to give them that milk and then they won't have enough energy to survive. And sometimes, yeah, someone said the bigger seals squash them. Sometimes they accidentally get in the way. Bigger seals don't do it on purpose, but they just can't see them. Um, so sometimes it happens, which is, which is sad. Oh, someone wants to know, do we have different animals or just elephant seals? We have so many animals, so many animals here. Elephant seals are one of my favorites, but we have sea otters. We have uh, other types of seals, like harbor seals, like we mentioned before. Animals on land, we have things like mountain lions, or bobcats, owls, all sorts of things. And I encourage you to check out our YouTube channel to learn more about different animals. How large is their territory along the coast? Do they migrate? And if so, how far do they travel? Great question. So uh, they, they do migrate. When they are out in the ocean, they're traveling thousands and thousands of miles. They go from their, uh, the beach where they were born, usually as far as Alaska, the tip of Alaska. So uh, they travel that far and when they come back, uh, they will come back usually to the same beach they were born at. Um, we have about six miles of uh, designated elephant seal territory here at Hearst San Simeon State Park. Uh, they're definitely found more on islands off the coast than they are on the mainland. Uh, but as their population grows, who knows, we might see more elephant seals come to mainland beaches. Good question. Uh, why are they huddled in groups? I think they just like to cuddle. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes they like to hang out next to each other. Um, they don't really care too much if they're crawling on top of each other. Okay. Um, let's see. Oh, someone's asking if we're doing another one of these uh, Zoom programs. Well, there's a lot of options. So uh, this session that you're a part of is called Coast to Couch. Uh, so we're bringing the coast to the central coast of California. I'm sorry, it's so windy. We're bringing coast to your room. So let me pull this up so you can see. Uh, so this is, uh, if you're a teacher or a parent watching, you can find out more info about when we're doing these Coast to Couch programs as well as other Zoom programs through California State Parks on our social media pages. Uh, if you're a student and you want to ask more questions that maybe we won't get to, I'll still have a couple minutes to answer your questions, so don't worry. But uh, you can uh, ask them on Padlet, which is just a website. You don't need an account or anything. You uh, can go to that link that you see on the screen there, padlet.com slash Simeon slash seals. You can ask any questions you want about seals and I will type them there for you. Also, uh, if you want to show me some artwork that you did today, uh, if that helped you uh, learn about these seals, I'd love it if you showed me. So let me show you an example of what I did. So after I learned about something, I usually like to draw it to help me remember. So I drew an elephant seal here. This one is a male because I drew its big nose. And I noticed, uh, I really thought it's cool how elephant seals have a chest shield. So I drew that on there. I also drew some cookie cutter shark bite scars on its belly because I thought that was cool. And I thought it was cool that they molt. So I drew some patches of fur on its back. And I labeled it Monica's elephant seal on the beach. It's so windy, I'm sorry. But if you want to show me a drawing, then you can draw your own picture. And uh, you can have your parents or your teacher post it on social media. And you can use the hashtag coast to couch or coast to couch art and love to see it. And if you do that, I'll be able to see it and I'll be able to tell you great job. Love your artwork. Uh, awesome. Okay. Now I'm going to go for a couple more minutes to answer your questions. Someone says, can I visit in the summer? Well, uh, it might not be a good idea to come and visit right now just because 
everything that's going on. So thank you so much for asking. I uh, hope you guys and hopefully uh, watching these videos will be good enough for now. And then once everything's a little bit safer and parts start to reopen, then you can come visit for yourself and you can have a really good time here. Uh, how big is the state park? It's very, very big. So uh, we have about uh, 23 miles of coastline that we cover just at first San Simeon State Park. But uh, our district, so first San Simeon State Park and Morro Bay State Park and a couple other uh, parks, they're about 40 miles of coastline. One of the most beautiful coastline in the world. So if you've never been here before, maybe uh, you'll be able to come visit. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and sign off for now. Uh, before I do that, just make sure you uh, take a picture or a screenshot of what's on your screen so you can share with us. Uh, say thank you so, so much to all of you uh, who joined today. And I look forward to maybe seeing you again for another episode of Coast to Couch. Uh, and one more thing, if you get really bored at home, and if you want to know what's going on with the elephant seals, we actually have a live camera that is on the elephant seal beach. It's on all the time, every single day. So get your parents or teacher to help you. Uh, you can search the California State Parks website for the elephant seal live camera. And you can watch those elephant seals right here. Um, okay, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and say goodbye. Thank you again. Remember to reach out to uh, reach out to us if you have any questions, anything that you want to know, uh, through our social media pages, through Padlet, or uh, my email address. I'll just say it real quick: is Monica Rutherford at Parks.ca.gov. Monica Rutherford at Parks.ca.gov. I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Okay, everyone. Thank you so, so much. Have a wonderful day and stay safe. Bye.